Greetings from St. John's Church. Uh, Corey and I wanted to uh, address uh, the congregation uh, as we find ourselves uh, as a church and and as a world in the midst uh, in our country of a time of civil unrest. And uh, in the aftermath of the death of of George Floyd and uh, the arrest of Officer Chauvin for murder in that case in uh, Minneapolis, uh, we wanted to just speak to that a little bit. Um, we realized as we were watching the service yesterday, Sunday, that we did not address it at all and wanted to let you know that's because we actually filmed that service on Thursday afternoon. And uh, a lot of the rioting and the protests and uh, a lot of the, the, the things that happened over the weekend happened after we recorded that service, but we didn't want you to think that we were simply ignoring uh, the events of our country and our state. And so we wanted to speak to that. And as we were talking this morning about what we wanted to say to you, uh, Corey uh, pointed out that Micah 6, 8 uh, spoke to our situation uh, uh, for us, which is uh, how do we as a church respond in times like these? Yeah, so Micah 6, 8, the verse reads, um, He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our Lord. And so that, as Ken and I were talking, that sort of framed the conversation. The Lord brought that to us and really um, uh, wrapped our conversation around it. We realized that that is the response uh, that we are called to have. And so we want to walk through that a little bit with you about what does that look like. And so the first is the idea of to do justice. Now, uh, this oftentimes is um, the first thing uh, that we jump to. We demand justice. Uh, This country is built on a system of justice. And so uh, it is oftentimes in situations like these, the first response that we crave is that there would be justice that is done. Um, And that is a right response, but it's not the fullness of the response. It's not the complete response we as Christians need to have uh, to this situation, but it is important. And so um, what is the justice exactly that we are looking for? Um, We are all uh, created in the image of God. We are the image bearers of God, every human being. And so uh, for a Christian, our response is to value life and to value all life. Um, And so justice in this situation uh, involves the valuing of life, whether that is the life of George Floyd or the life of those who are put in harm's way needlessly because of uh, reactions, violent reactions um, to what's taken place in our country. Uh, And it's important, as Ken and I were talking, it's important to recognize that there needs to be a response to both of those things. Uh, and it's important for us uh, to check our own convictions and, and to process through this so that we um, recognize that all life has value because it has been bestowed on us by God. Um, and, and no one life is better uh, than another. Um, but we're called to bring the gospel to every race and to every nation um, because all um, carry that image of God. And so to do justice is... Uh, to value life uh, and to demand um, that others um, value life as well. Uh, Another part of the justice side is that that we feel like as a church, uh, unacceptable behavior and injustice demand a response from us. And so one of the things that Corey and I want to do is say sort of unequivocally uh, that we condemn uh, the actions of the police officers that resulted in the death of George Floyd, but we also equally condemn uh, the riotous actions of, of the, the, the folks that are protesting. We agree that peaceful protests are part of who we are as Americans, and we are excited that we live in a country where we have the freedom to do that. But when those protests turn to violence and vandalism and, and people are harmed and property is damaged, uh, we want to condemn that just as, as we want to condemn the actions of the police officers who, uh, who, who killed uh, George Floyd. So, so justice demands a response from the church and a, a response from us as church leaders. Um, the second thing 
that we want to talk about. Uh, number one is to do justice, and number two is to love mercy. And uh, we, as uh, the church, are called to to give mercy to everyone involved in this situation. Uh, just as Jesus came into the world uh, to give mercy to all of us while we were still in our sins, we, as the church, are called. To, uh, to, to, to love mercy and to offer mercy to all the parties involved in this, even those that we disagree with, no matter where we are on the political spectrum. So to do justice and, and to love mercy. Yeah, and as I look through uh, the images that are coming through from across the country, um, I find what strikes me, and, and maybe this is true for you too, but it's, it's those moments that are captured um, when uh, empathy wins, um, when that love of mercy wins, when the police officer who's holding the line takes a knee, uh, when there's an embrace between protesters and police officers. These are ways in which we can recognize that there are troubling times and deep issues that need to be addressed, and yet we can do so in a way that is uh, that loves mercy and that shows kindness and uh, empathy towards people who have different perspectives than ours. Absolutely. And then the final piece uh, from Micah is to walk humbly with our God. And one of the things that we as Christians are called to be is we're called to be humble. And we as the church are called to approach this position, uh, this situation, not this position, to approach this situation and this crisis with a sense of humility. And what that means for us is we feel like that means three things. Uh, Number one yeah, we feel like it means we don't have to have all the answers, and we don't. Uh, I wish Corey and I could tell you exactly what the appropriate and faithful response is to these things, but we don't know exactly what all the answers are uh, yet. Uh, but number two, we trust uh, that God's presence and God's provision uh, will be with us in these times, that God hasn't abandoned us and that God is present with us and present Uh, with our country during these uncertain times. And so we have the humility to know we don't have the answers, but God does have the answers, and he is uh, in the midst of this. And then the final thing is we we pledge to work together as we walk through this crisis. So uh, that is our prayer for us as a church, and our prayer for our country is that we would, would walk humbly through this, deal mercifully with all those involved, and that justice would, in fact, be done uh, for, for, for those who have, have perpetrated these, these uh, atrocious acts. Yeah. Part of that faithful response that we are all wrestling with <clears throat> is recognizing um, the effect that time has. You know? and, and part of that faithful response is acknowledging that um, how we feel today is going to be different than how we feel in a month. Um, and, uh, and we need to let... Um, let time have its day, um, and let's see um, what the Lord does, how He convicts, and how He stirs up um, our hearts um, to do these things, to to do justice, and to love mercy, and and to walk humbly with our Lord. Um, our response is ongoing. It's not just a response today, but it's something that will continue, and that we'll be wrestling with and working with uh, in the days and weeks and months to come. Absolutely. I invite you all at this time to uh, pray with me. This is a a collect from our ACNA prayer book uh, for the whole human family. Let us pray. Oh God, you made us in your own image, and you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in the bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you and your families. Uh, We pray for protection over our country and protection over our state. And uh, we trust that God is in charge and that his will uh, ultimately will be done. And we pray that he would use us as his church uh, in the midst of these uncertain times. God bless you.